Get the home field advantage every time with Fairfield by Marriott, official hotel partner of the NCAA. Whether you're a student athlete working toward your championship dreams or your team's biggest fan, Fairfield by Marriott has everything you need to get ready for game day. From comfortable guest rooms to complimentary hot breakfast, Fairfield is part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels and official hotel partner of the NCAA. Visit fairfield.marriott.com to book your next game day stay. Welcome into The Verge, a show which covers the Baltimore Orioles minor leagues. The Verge is part of BSL Radio. Baltimore Sports and Life is dedicated to analysis and discussion on the Orioles, Baltimore Ravens, and the University of Maryland. The site has a team of writers providing coverage of those teams and houses live streaming content weekly. Join the conversations at the message board, like BSL on Facebook, and follow BSL on Twitter. On Twitter. Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we discovered Spotify for Podcasters, we feel like having options like video podcasts and Q&A lets us be more creative on another level. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hello, and thank you for listening to today's On The Verge Daily. I'm your host, Bob Phelan, recapping the games from Saturday, September 2nd. Fun day and night of baseball yesterday, especially if you're an Orioles fan. Orioles clobbered the Arizona Diamondbacks 7-2, or 7-3, excuse me, Joey Crable. Matt Winter uh, spoke too soon. Even though it was only a four-run win, it felt like uh, it was more than that. It was a cathartic six-run inning or five-run inning, whatever it was, and, and whatever inning it was, I've lost track. But it was fun. It was fun to watch. Mullins hit that three-run homer, and then the offense woke up from there. But down on the farm, there are some very exciting things to talk about as well. Let's start with AAA, as Norfolk defeated Worcester 6-4 to four in 10 innings. Chase McDermott was Chase McStrikeouts once again, probably his best start of the year, even though the strikeouts weren't his uh, season high. He pitched seven innings, only giving up one run on two hits, only one walk, a solo home run was all that she wrote for the Red Sox AAA team's offense. He struck out seven batters, and he's got his ERA down to 2.56. Took him 92 pitches to get through seven innings. That is huge. The fact that they're even letting him go past five tells me that, okay, we want to see what you got, and I think he's going to come into spring training next year trying to win a job on the big league team. Someone who will probably be fighting for a job is Brian Baker, who gave up three runs over one and two-thirds. Juanis and Charles had to come in and uh, try to clean up some mess there. He, he gave up a hit in two walks over one-third of an inning, but his one out was a strikeout. And he got the win with Kyle Dowdy getting the save, a uh, clean 10th inning with a strikeout. Offensively, Connor Norby, he hit a home run, his 18th. He also walked. He's batting 287 with an 824 OPS. Continues to just get better as the year goes on. Heston Kerstad, three for five. Nice to see him have another multi-hit game. Kind of continue to break out of that mini slump he was in. Joey Ortiz, talking about mini slumps, he's in one. He was there for five with a strikeout. Skipping Kobe Mayo for now because I want to dig into him a little bit more. Daz Cameron was there for four, but he walked and scored a run. Lewin Diaz had a, a game that is reminiscent of April of this year. He was three for four with three runs, two RBI, a walk, a double his 18th, and a home run his 15th. He's got his OPS creeping back towards 800. Ramon Rodriguez was 1 for 4 with an RBI, a walk, and a double. And Shane Fontana was 2 for 5 with an RBI and a double. Back to Kobe Mayo, who was 2 for 3 with a run, an RBI, 2 walks, his 11th double, and ninth home run since joining AAA. Let's see how he's doing since, oh, I don't know. August 8th, perhaps. He's batting 297 with an 1115 OPS. He has six doubles and seven home runs in that time. 
a 21.1% walk rate, and a 14.7% strikeout rate for a 173 WRC+. plus. Just ridiculous. His total line, now he's got an 879 OPS and 114 WRC+. plus. Despite running a 255 BABIP, which is like more than 100 points lower than he had at AA, he's got an identical walk rate, 14.7% that he had with Bowie, and he's lowered his strikeout rate by 4%. It's down to 20.9 from 24.8. All incredible signs that he is another guy who, look, I, I had been saying, you know, he'll probably be like a mid-2024 promotion to the big leagues. Not so sure anymore. If he's figured out things this fast in AAA, he's another guy coming into spring training trying to win a job out of the spring or very close to it because my man is proven to be ready. Obviously, you're going to want a little more sustained success and there'll be ebbs and flows like anything, but just astronomically great stuff from Kobe there. He's going to be a stud. I mean, he's 21 years old and putting up these numbers in AAA. Forget it. Down in Double A Bowie, they defeated the Akron Rubber Ducks four to two. Connor Gillespie continues his solid season. He got the win. He's seven and four with a three point seven five ERA after giving up two runs over five innings with seven strikeouts. I'm a little bit surprised that he's still getting starts. I feel like he doesn't profile as even a back end reliever probably at the major league level, but he's there's something there. I think he'll be a, a solid reliever when that eventually happens. They've been very deliberate with his development. Very curious to see what the plan is with him long term. Keegan Gillis back on track after a couple of rough outings. Struck out five batters over two innings to get the hold. 4.35 ERA and Nolan Hoffman got the save. Two scoreless innings with two strikeouts. His seventh save and a 3.05 ERA to go along with it. Dylan Beavers, two for four, leading off with a run and a walk. Just continues to hit. Batting 340 with an 891 OPS. Jackson Holiday one for four with a run, his ninth double in a walk. Judd Fabian continues to barely hit, but when he does, hit it a long way. He was one for four with a home run in the first inning. He also walked, had three RBI in the game. He's batting 169 with a 720 OPS. Just kind of silly there. John Rhodes walked. Dante Williams walked. Greg Cullen was one for three with an RBI. And Connor Pavaloni was two for three with a stolen base. His first of the season. Must be healthy. Aberdeen Ironbirds, they defeated the Jersey Shore Blue Claws 10-8 to eight in extra innings. Kyle Verbitsky, not his best stuff. Gave up four runs over four innings with five strikeouts, but he walked three, raising his ERA to 4.07. Jared Beck. He's a project. He's seven foot tall. So, you know, Randy Johnson, it took forever to really hone in and lock in on his command and stuff. And Jared Beck's going to be similar. Not saying he's going to be Randy Johnson, but the player that he will be in four or five years is probably nothing like the player he is right now. But he still shows a lot of potential. That said, he gave up four runs, two earned over one and two thirds innings yesterday with two strikeouts and three walks allowed. Carson Carter had one and a third scoreless innings with two strikeouts. Reese Sharp continues to stay sharp, striking out two over two scoreless innings. No walks. Again, great. He got the win. He's 5-3, 5 5.40 ERA. Dylan Hyde continues to be dominant and strike out like Felix Bautista levels of batters. He struck out two over scoreless inning to get the save, his fourth. Offensively, Carter Young led off was one for five with a run, an RBI, and a walk. Frederick Bencosme, as soon as I put on Twitter that my man is... uh, one of the quote-unquote busts of the season. Not that I think he's a bust long-term, but just that his season has not gone well as I thought it would, but still solid for a 21-year-old in high A. Well, he had a triple two days ago, and now he was three for six with three RBIs and a double. His 17th yesterday, he also stole his 26th base. He's got his batting average up to 235. Samuel Basayo, another guy I want to dig into deeper. He missed a week with a concussion protocol. Not sure if it was a confirmed concussion or just, you know, they gave him the seven days just to be safe. He comes back, doesn't miss a beat. Three for four, three runs, four RBIs, a double, his fifth, two home runs, his fourth, third and fourth, and two walks. The first home run was absolutely jacked. 110 off the bat. Kid just turned 19 and he's hitting poolside bombs, 110 miles per hour. He's going to hit the warehouse. There's almost no doubt in my mind, as long as he plays in Baltimore long-term, 
He's batting 284 with a 939 OPS on the season, and that is after starting his high A Aberdeen career, going two for 26. Since that time period, over 58 plate appearances, he's batting 396 with a 1292 OPS, five doubles, a triple, all four of his home runs, four stolen bases, 17.2% walk rate, only a 15.5% strikeout rate. That's insane. He is, again, he was 18, just turned 19, like, A month ago, I want to say, and he's striking out 15% of the time over the past month in high A. I mean, sky's the limit. Sky is the absolute limit with Samuel Basayo. Creed Willems was one for six with an RBI. Ryan Higgins, one for four with a run and a walk. Isaac DeLeon was three for five with a run. Trenton Craig, one for four with a run and a walk. And Jeff Florentino was two for five with a run and RBI and his second double with the Ironbirds. Shorebirds had a doubleheader, and they lost both games, but there was still some good things here. Maybe not on the pitching side necessarily, especially in Game 1. Luis DeLeon, who's the helium of all helium pitchers for the Orioles this year, international guy, he had a rough outing, walked five batters over one and a third, gave up five runs, only two were earned, so defense clearly didn't help him out, gave up one hit, struck out a batter, Got the loss, but he's still got a 1.54 ERA on the season. And again, super young, so these these things will happen. Brainer Sanchez, he gave up four runs over one and two-thirds on five hits and two walks. Braxton Bragg gave up two runs over two innings. And Kelvin LaRoche had a scoreless inning with a walk and a strikeout. Mr. Chaos, Enrique Bradfield Jr. was one for four with a run and RBI two stolen bases, giving him 20 for the season. Matt Corvath was one for four, also stole a base his eighth. Matthew Etzel, one for three with a run, a walk, and his third double. Jake Cunningham, one for two with a run, two RBIs, a walk, and a double, his first for Delmarva. Steven Acevedo was one for two with an RBI and a walk. More on him in a bit because in game two, he had a two-run homer, his 13th of the year. Also had two runs in the game. He's now batting 241 with a 722 OPS. It was a losing effort, 7 to 11 for the Shorebirds. But Stephen Acevedo, you want to talk about development and progress? You heard his season line. Well, if you skip ahead from the start of the season to June 4th, since June 4th, he's batting 260 with 788 OPS, a 120 WRC plus, 205 ISO. 7.7% walk rate and 27.3% strikeout rate. If you go a little bit further, since the All-Star break, July 15th to today, he's batting 265 with an 846 OPS, a 133 WRC+, plus, a 252 ISO, 7.8% walk rate and 25.1% strikeout rate. If you go ahead a little bit further, August 6th, Since then, he's batting only 250, but with an 881 OPS, a 141 WRC plus, and a 313 ISO. So clearly learning to tap into that raw power that we know he's had. He's a big guy, 6'4", big kid, really. Still only 21 years old, just turned a month ago. Walk rate, 6.8%. Strikeout rate, 28.4%. So that didn't continue the trend, but everything else did. He's tapping into that power. Yeah, watch out. This is a guy next year that could take another leap if he continues to develop at this rate that's that's a really good sign and a great example of why you don't give up on guys after a few disappointing seasons especially when they're in their late teens early 20s and international prospects so fantastic stuff from Mr. Acevedo. Tavian Josenberger was two for four with two runs an RBI and a walk in game two he had a triple and also stole his sixth base Got his batting average up to 213 with a 662 OPS after a very slow start. Matthew Etzel was two for three with two RBI, a walk, and his 15th stolen base in the game. He's batting 318 with a 932 OPS. Jake Cunningham, one for three with a run and a walk in his second stolen base. Jalen Vasquez was one for four with a triple and an RBI. Brian Hernandez, one for four with an RBI and a double, his sixth. And Adam Crampton was one for four with a run. Adam Crampton, maybe one of the worst draft picks offensively that the Orioles have made in recent years, considering he seemed to be pretty polished. He's still in Delmarva and batting 193 with a 518 OPS. He's lucky he can play defense. 
But that'll do it for me today. Someone will be with you tomorrow to recap the games from Sunday as we're about to enter the final week of the season for Low A Delmarva and High A Aberdeen. Cameron Weston gets the start for Aberdeen today. And that's the only starter that's listed on the app. So we'll see who else pitches and who else hits some home runs and continues to give the Orioles the best farm system in baseball. So as always, thank you for listening and thank you for being a patron. That'll do it for this week's episode of On The Verge. Be sure to check out our Patreon page where you can help show your support for the show and get bonus content, including monthly top 50 updates to our prospect list and daily game recaps during the season and much, much more.